Thank you for joining us for this educational video. At MediSystems, a next stage company, we are dedicated to excellence in clinical education and support. Today, we will be discussing constant site cannulation of native arterial venous fistulas, also known as the buttonhole technique. We will review the different types of hemodialysis access, introduce the clinical benefits of constant site cannulation, review practices designed to prevent infection, discuss creating and cannulating buttonhole sites, introduce the importance of monitoring access. To begin, let's review the different access types. There are three types of access, an AV fistula, an AV graft, and a catheter. An AV fistula is made during outpatient surgery by connecting an artery to a vein. This causes the vein to get larger and stronger so that larger dialysis needles can be used. The fistula is usually placed in the lower arm, but can also be in the upper arm or thigh. Fistulas are the access of choice because they have less chance of clotting and infection, less hospitalization due to access issues, and may last longer than other types of access. With an AV graft access, a synthetic tube is used to connect an artery and vein under the skin. Grafts are normally used when veins are too small or fragile. Problems can include clotting and infection, and the graft may need to be replaced if the problems cannot be fixed. Often, having a graft may lead to veins becoming larger, allowing an AV fistula to be created at a later date. A catheter is a tube normally inserted through the skin near the collarbone and placed into the large vein going to the heart. A catheter is sometimes needed when dialysis first starts, while a fistula is maturing, or if there are no other access options. Catheters are normally used as a temporary access. Catheter complications often occur, such as infection, clotting, and lower blood flows leading to poor dialysis treatments. Constant site cannulation is only used with an AV fistula. Constant site cannulation is the practice of cannulating an AV fistula by going into the exact same spot repeatedly. This technique has been used worldwide for over 35 years. The process of creating buttonhole cannulation sites begins with cannulating the same site using sharp fistula needles for approximately 6 to 10 cannulations. By cannulating the same site at the exact same angle and depth of needle penetration, a scar tissue tunnel track is formed. Once the sites are established, any person familiar with the buttonhole technique can cannulate the established sites. A constant site is different from one site itis, the problem of access damage that can occur from repeatedly cannulating roughly the same area with a sharp needle. One site itis can cause the vessel wall to weaken, which may lead to the development of aneurysms, skin breakdown, infection, or loss of access. For many patients, Cannulation can be stressful and painful. However, clinical studies show that many patients performing the buttonhole technique experience less discomfort than the rope ladder technique using sharp needles, fewer missed sticks than the rope ladder technique using sharp needles. Needles. When I'm putting them in, it there's, you know, because because I'm controlling it myself, I can go as fast or as slow as I want. I think almost every patient will tell you that they would never put their own needles in uh, if push came to shove. However, um, I, I remember this one patient particularly because he swore up and down that he would never put a needle in. First day of training, I said, okay, do you want to try it? And he said, he took a big breath and he said, okay. And he put the first needle in and his eyes lit up and he said, I will never let anybody else put my needles in. He's in control of where it goes and how it hurts and how it doesn't hurt and it gives them control over their 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 treatment. So when the patient is cannulating their own fistula, they often um, are have a better sense of of the of where to place the needle. Uh, it, it's less painful and we get much better needle placement when the patient's placing the needle themselves um, and they say it's it's much less painful for them. Now that we have reviewed the basic concepts of constant site cannulation and its advantages, let's discuss correct procedures and protocols, including choosing the buttonhole sites, preparing the site, creating the buttonhole sites, cannulation using buttonhole fistula needle sets, proper needle removal, and monitoring buttonhole sites. Choosing the buttonhole sites. 
When choosing the buttonhole sites, remember to consider these important tips. Stay at least one inch from anastomosis. Look for a straight area that is at least the length of a fistula needle. Avoid curves, flat spots, and aneurysms. Space needle sites at least two to three inches apart. The direction of needle insertion depends on which direction delivers the best flow and who will be the cannulator. Considering that the patient may be the cannulator, the site should be easily accessible for them. Have the patient demonstrate that they are able to position the needle as required for cannulation. When self-cannulating, be sure that the access extremity is positioned comfortably, lighting is good, and glasses worn if needed. Preparing the site. Wash hands and access with antibacterial soap. Put on a clean face mask. Wearing a face mask helps prevent the spread of bacteria from the nose and mouth during the disinfection and cannulation procedures. Disinfect buttonhole sites with an approved disinfecting agent. There are several agents that may be used for skin antisepsis. Examples of the most commonly used are chloroprep, betadine, povidone, iodine, alcohol, and XEP+. Make sure to follow the manufacturer's directions for use for contact time, motion for cleaning and drying time. Use a different swab or pad to disinfect each site. Creating the buttonhole sites. During buttonhole site creation, there may be a scab present at the insertion site. It is very important to remove scabs completely before cannulation. Scabs may be removed during the initial washing step. If scabs remain and need to be further softened, you may use a gauze pad soaked with either water, saline, or antibacterial soap or an alcohol pad. To loosen the scab, stretch the skin in all four directions around the site. Remove the scab completely by using a sterile gauze or a scab removal device. Slide the scab removal device under the loosened edge of the scab and lift it off completely. So I use the SteriPick to remove my scabs. Uh, I soak them with a 2x2 with, a two two with saline on it first for about 10 minutes. And then I swab it with the um, chloroprep. And uh, then I use the Steri pick to lift the scabs, and that seems to work well for me. Do not use any needles to remove scabs. Sharp needles may cut into the skin, which may lead to an infection or oozing during treatment. After scab removal, buttonhole sites must be disinfected again. Scabs harbor bacteria that may be spread during the scab removal process. Try to avoid the use of topical anesthetics and subcutaneous lidocaine that numb the area prior to the cannulation procedure. The use of these products may cause scarring, vasoconstriction, and keloid formation, which could make inserting the needle more difficult. Always place a tourniquet above the access sites. Using a tourniquet stabilizes and enlarges the vessel, making it easier to cannulate. Using a sharp AV fistula needle, Mate the needle wings and remove the needle tip protector. Align the needle with the bevel facing up over the cannulation site. Pull the skin taut. Cannulate the site at a 20 to 25 degree angle. Self-cannulators may require a slightly steeper angle. During buttonhole site creation, the same angle and depth of penetration should be used for all needle insertions. When a flashback is observed, lower the insertion angle and slowly advance the needle. Never insert the needle so far that the hub of the needle is touching the insertion site. Securely tape the needle according to your center's procedure. Do not place tape directly over the puncture site. Repeat the previous steps to access the second buttonhole site and then initiate dialysis according to your center's procedure. Ensure that the access site is visible during the dialysis treatment. To remove the fistula needles after the dialysis treatment is complete, remember to Put on clean gloves. Remove needles at the same angle of insertion using one fluid motion. Remove only one needle at a time. Use the anti-needle stick safety device as appropriate. And wait to apply pressure to the site until after the needle is removed. It is best to use two fingers to apply pressure over both the vessel and puncture site. After bleeding has stopped, cover the sites with adhesive bandages or gauze and tape. Do not place tape completely around the access extremity. Remove dressing as instructed by your center. Dispose of needles into an approved sharps container. Here are some tips for successful buttonhole site creation.
It is helpful to limit the number of cannulators. Use of multiple cannulators may delay or prevent the development of successful sites. Backup buttonhole sites may be established in the unlikely event that the primary sites cannot be used. These sites can be developed at the same time as the primary sites or at a later point. Developing backup sites at the same time as the primary sites can ease some of the scheduling difficulties of using a single cannulator in an outpatient setting. Once buttonhole sites have been created, it is time to start using buttonhole fistula needle sets. These may also be referred to as blunt or dull fistula needles. Cannulation using the buttonhole fistula needle sets. The buttonhole cannulation process is similar to cannulation with sharp fistula needles. Preparing the site. Wash hands and access with antibacterial soap. Put on a clean face mask. Disinfect buttonhole sites with an approved disinfecting agent. Make sure to follow the manufacturer's directions for use for contact time, motion for cleaning and drying time. Use a different swab or pad to disinfect each site. During cannulation of the buttonhole site, there may be a scab present at the insertion site. It is very important to remove scabs completely before cannulation. Scabs may be removed during the initial washing step. If scabs remain and need to be further softened, you may use a gauze pad soaked with either water, saline, or antibacterial soap, or an alcohol pad. To loosen the scab, stretch the skin in all four directions around the site. Remove the scab completely by using a sterile gauze or a scab removal device. Slide the scab removal device under the loosened edge of the scab and lift it off completely. Do not use needles to remove scabs. After scab removal, buttonhole sites must be disinfected again. Scabs harbor bacteria that may be spread during the scab removal process. Now we are ready for cannulation using the buttonhole needle. Always place a tourniquet above the access sites. Using a tourniquet stabilizes and enlarges the vessel, making it easier to cannulate. Align the buttonhole needle with the bevel up at the buttonhole site. Slowly insert the needle using gentle pressure. The dull beveled edge of the buttonhole needle will slide down the established scar tissue tunnel track without cutting new tissue. If mild to moderate resistance is met while attempting to insert the needle, grasp the tubing behind the wings with your thumb and index finger and rotate the needle to advance it while maintaining constant, gentle pressure. When a blood flashback is observed, reduce the insertion angle and ease the needle forward, leaving a small portion of the needle exposed. The needle hub should not be up against the insertion site. Securely tape the needle. Repeat the previous steps to access the second site and then initiate dialysis per the protocol at your center. To remove the fistula needles after the dialysis treatment is complete, remember to put on clean gloves. Remove needles at the same angle of insertion using one fluid motion. Remove only one needle at a time. And wait to apply pressure to the site until after the needle is removed. It is best to use two fingers to apply pressure over both the vessel and puncture site. Dispose of the buttonhole needle into an approved sharps container. Monitoring your access. An important part of access management is to continually monitor your access to make sure that it is healthy and functional. Physical exams are an essential part of all access management programs and are particularly important with constant site cannulation. Changes in vascular and skin integrity may require that constant sites be re-established. By performing routine physical exams, problems should be detected early. Assess for thrill and pulse, and note any bruising. Evaluate for the development of accessory veins. Make sure to document your findings. It is very important to look for signs of infection. Redness, drainage from the buttonhole site, and the access feeling warmer to touch may be signs of an infection. The patient may or may not have a fever, Signs of infection should be reported immediately. Report any findings that may indicate a need for intervention as soon as possible. Self-cannulation. Self-cannulation enables patients' independence. For patients who are interested in self-cannulation, make sure to introduce the concept slowly, taking note of the patient's fear and anxiety levels. One of the biggest fears for many patients is needle insertion. It is also important to communicate proper technique to help patients understand how to prevent infections and maintain long-term health of their access sites. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate your time. 
MediSystems, a next stage company, is a leader in innovative hemodialysis products. If we can provide you with more information on the constant site cannulation technique, please contact us at 1-800-369-MEDI.